Not all customers are worth the same to a business. So why don't we evaluate marketing channels by the types of customers they bring us? Well, one answer is that Universal Analytics never made it very easy for us to do that. But GA4 has a little bit more flexibility when it comes to audience creation and does make that easier. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to create five customer-focused audiences here in GA4. And those audiences are going to include all purchasers, all non-purchasers, card abandoners, first time buyers and repeat customers. So one last thing I'll mention before we get started is that if you're not already tracking purchase or add to cart events for your store here in GA4, then I highly recommend checking out my GA4 for Shopify video because that'll make sure that you have all the foundation in place for setting up these audiences. And be sure to stay tuned for the end as well because we'll also do a very quick tutorial on how to report on your new audiences once they're set up. So with all that said, let's get started. So to create our audiences, we're gonna go to the configure tab right here and then we'll go to audiences and this page is going to show us all of our audiences how many users belong to each audience how much that audience has changed compared to the previous period in our date range and when the audience was created so we'll use this button right here to create a new audience and they'll give us a few options here for audience creation first there's the custom audience option which we'll be using a little bit later in this video and then there's a few of these preset options down here there's also templates if we want to create audiences based around demographics uh traffic or acquisition methods and devices. The last option here is pretty cool. And this is definitely new to GA4 and not in Universal Analytics, but this is, these are predictive audiences based on people who are either likely to buy or likely to churn based on Google's machine learning models. So to start off, we're going to create our non-purchaser and purchaser audiences, which we can do directly from these templates right here. So first we'll start off with non-purchasers. And in this case, Google pretty much does all the work for us. It's gonna create this audience just by excluding people who've made any kind of purchase. And if you followed my GK4 video, then you'll be using this purchase event right here. So in this case, we're going to make one slight tweak and set our membership duration to the maximum limit because we really want to get as accurate of an idea of all people who've been to the site who have never purchased. In this case, they'll become a different or they'll go to a different audience when they actually do make a purchase. So at this point, we'll just click save. And then next, we'll go ahead and create an audience based off of purchasers. And this one's just as easy to set up. We'll create this one based off of the purchaser's preset. And this is pretty much identical to the non-purchaser setup, or really it's just the opposite of it. And in this case, we're just including someone whenever they make any one of these purchase events. So just like the last one, we'll also set this to the maximum limit. And in my case, I already have this audience, so I'm not gonna save this one. So now we're gonna create an audience that's a little bit more interesting, card abandoners. So we'll create our new audience and we'll start off with our non-purchasers because this is actually gonna give us a nice template to work from. And then we're going Going to include users when and we'll add a new condition under events and then we'll say add to cart and then under our parameter we're going to select event count greater than zero so in this case we'll change our event name up here to card abandoners. And just like all the others, we're gonna set this one to the maximum limit also. And we can also start doing something kind of interesting with this too. So we can also create a new audience trigger. And basically what this is gonna do is it's going to fire an event whenever someone becomes a part of this audience. So if we want to track card abandonments over time, we can easily do that and we can name the event card abandonment. One thing I will mention is that we don't really wanna to get too crazy with setting up audience triggers, or at least we don't really have the option to yet because Google does have a limit of 20 audience triggered events per property. So keep that in mind. So we'll save this one and save that. And the next event that we're gonna create is repeat customers. So we'll create a new audience and then we'll start off with our purchasers audience here as a template. And we're gonna tweak the parameters here so that the event count for each of these is greater than one. So one thing I'll note is that for some reason, the only condition option they give us here is greater than. So that's why we're setting up our repeat buyers before our first time buyers. And we'll cover that one next. So for now, our repeat purchasers will be made up of anyone who's done any of these purchase events more than once they've bought two or more times and then just like our others we'll set this to the maximum limit and we can also create an audience trigger called repeat purchase and then we'll save this and next we're going to set up our first time buyers audience so we'll select new audience right here and then We'll create it as a custom audience. And in this case, I'm just going to use the purchase event since that's what I've set up for my demo store. And here we'll say that the um, event count is greater than zero. 
exclude users when the event count is greater than one. So in this case, we'll only include our first time buyers. We'll set this to the maximum limit. And then we'll also create an event or an audience trigger for first purchase, and then we'll save that. And so at this point, we have our five new audiences here. We have first time buyers, repeat purchasers, card abandoners, non-purchasers, and purchasers. So if we wanna report on our audiences, one quick way that we can do that is through the Explore tab right here. And so in this case, I'm gonna use data from the uh, Google demo account because it's gonna be a bit more interesting than what my demo store has to offer. So to do this, we can just get started by creating a new exploration. And then here under dimensions, we'll use audience name. And if you also want to evaluate different audiences against certain channels, if we're going back to our original question of why aren't we evaluating our marketing channels by the types of customers they bring us, then there's a few different ways that you can do that. And if we look at this, for example, under traffic source, we get two different options. There's the session source medium and the first user source medium. So anytime you're evaluating what kind of customer a traffic source is bringing you, you're going to want to use the first user version of that dimension because the first user is basically going to show you the user that that channel acquired versus just the one that they happen to arrive at. So for example, if um, you acquired a customer for the first time through Facebook ads, but they made all of their subsequent purchases through email or organic search or whatever, first user is going to be the best way to see that customer. So we'll add in our first user source medium as well. And then for metrics, let's just add in our uh, purchases and purchase revenue. And we can also add in transactions per purchaser, why not? So first, we'll add in audience name to the row. And then our values, we'll add purchases, purchase revenue, and transactions per purchaser. And so at this point, we get a pretty good idea of how all these different audiences perform. So if we want to add in uh, the source and medium on top of that, then I'll just drag it right here. And cool. And so this isn't a super easy way to visualize the data. So if we want to, at this point, we can also right click on any particular channel that we want to look at. So I'll right click on Google Organic and we can include only this selection. So at this point, we'll see performance for all of our different audiences for Google Organic traffic specifically. And so in this case, only all users have come from Google Organic. So not a super interesting report, but you get the idea. It'll be more interesting with your own data. So if you like this this video, if this helped you out, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'd hugely appreciate it. And in the next video, we're going to look at how to do some better and more interesting reporting than what we're getting right here through Data Studio, because Data Studio will give us a little bit of flexibility that just isn't quite here in the Explore tab yet.